Okay, so we are going to look at approximating functions with tangent lines. Do you know what a tangent line is? Yes. Have you already written equations of tangent lines? Yes, we are 90% there. Okay. So we're gonna so three big ideas from what we're doing today. We're gonna you remember how to write an equation of a tangent line, which we can do. Understand the concept of a tangent line to a function, which I think we got down for the most part too. Then this is the quote new part of this. Use the tangent line to approximate a function value near the point of tangency. I'll talk about how that works when we get there. Okay, so a tangent line is just a line, just a simple old line. You know how to use lines, right? It's just a line. To write an equation of a line, what do we have to have? What do we write down every time we do it? A point and a slope. A point and a slope. And how do we fit, what does the slope come from related to the function? The derivative derivative of the function. Okay, so a little review here to write equation, writing an equation of a tangent line, let f of, x, f of x be the function. To write an equation, f of x at x equals c, let's just add a point, right? So it says like, what is the line tangent to the graph at x equals 3 or whatever. So we have a point. So our point is c comma f of c because it comes from the original. The slope is f prime of c because we just said that it comes from the derivative, right? And then we know point slope form and what that looks like. Okay, so that's just all little reminders of stuff we already know how to do. So we are going to do that before we talk about how, what makes this a little bit, and that there, where there, the additional part comes in here. We've got f of x um, equals this function. We're going to write an equation of a line tangent. So anytime you see equation of a line tangent, you should go over here and write, okay, I'm going to need a point, and I'm going to need a slope. So it says at x equals 0, so my point is at 0 comma f of 0, and my slope is f prime of 0. Right? Those are the things that I'm looking for. Yes? Okay. So then I can come in here and do f. So I know I need f of 0. f of 0 is equal to 3 times e to the 2 times 0 plus 5. All right, well, what's 2 times 0? Zero? 0. So e to the 0 power is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus 5 is 8. See, the numbers are never bad with things like that. You just got to make sure you're not making up anything with your exponents. And whatnot. So that means my point is actually 0, 8. Then I need f prime of 0. So in order to find that, I actually need f prime, right? So I'm going to take the derivative. So f prime of x equals, do I have to do any special rules or anything here? Like, is there a special rule? No. Is there a chain rule? Possibly. Why do you say possibly? Because of the 2x. So if this was just e to the x, I wouldn't need a chain rule, but that is not x, that's a function, so there is a chain rule here, right? There's a product three times that, but that, three, that doesn't have an x, so there's really no product rule here. So I'm going to have three times the derivative of e to the 2x is e to the 2x, and then I take the derivative of that exponent, which is 2. And what's the derivative of 5? 0. Everybody with me? So that is my derivative, yes? Okay, so then that means when I want f prime of 0, it's going to give me 3 times e to the 2 times 0 times 2. So that e just becomes 1 again, and I get 6. Equals 6. You agree with all that? So then my equation... I can come in here and write my equation for all of this. y equals my slope, which is 6, times x minus 0 plus 8. And do I have to put the minus 0 in there? No. But if you do, then you have all your little places filled in and you don't have to worry about it, right? It's a safe stop. My suggestion is you just put the numbers in there, whatever they are. Okay? 
what questions you got? We all good? All right. So then this one says the derivative of the function y equals k of t is given by this derivative. It is known that k of 3 equals 19. Write the equation for the line tangent to k when t equals 3. All right, so I need a point. And I need a slope. So my point is going to be 3 k of 3, right? They did not give me a k function. Do I freak out? No. The answer is always no. Do I know what k of 3 is, though? What is it? 19. They told me that right now, or right there. So this is actually 3 comma 19. Do you have to write that first order pair? No, but if you don't know what it is, then it's not a bad idea to start there. Then my slope is k prime of 3, right? So I can find that right here. Yes? So what I'm looking for really is, because they already gave me the derivative, I don't have to find it. It tells me the derivative is this. So remember the notation for this. So this basically, this is k prime of t. Oh. This is k prime of t that dy dt is, but let's just use that notation because I know it's true of some of that. I want to be evaluated at, and in this case, there's y's in there. So it's not just that x equals 3, it's at the ordered pair, 3, 19, and then I get to substitute those in. So this gives me 1 fourth times, what do I substitute in? 19 plus 5, so that's 24, and a fourth of that is 6. So then the equation of my line, y equals 6 times x minus 3 plus 19. What questions you got? We good? We're kind of experts at that anyway, right? But don't go do weird things if they give you the derivative, right? Make sure you read what it is, and sometimes we're substituting in y. That's why we need to have that other little notation there. Okay, we all good with all that? Okay, so let's talk about why tangent lines. Like, why do we even, why are we talking about this to be able to approximate things? Okay, so tangent lines help us approximate values. Well, they also tell us the rate of change at that specific point, right? But they can also help us approximate values that we cannot easily evaluate on the function. So it says, note the function f of x. So here's my function. Here's the tangent line. That's t of x. When x is 5, the tangent line has the same value, right? So where they intersect, yes? Tangent line, they have whatever, whatever. It's the same for both functions right there. So also values near x equals 5 to the tangent line is near the graph. So if I was to zoom in really, really far, I mean, it almost looks like this is intersecting the whole thing anyway, right? So whatever, when I have 5.1, when x is 5.1, the y values of these two functions aren't going to be exactly the same, but they will be really, really close. Do you agree with that? And then the farther I go when I'm at 7, they're no longer that close. Like, that wouldn't be a good approximation. But anything right around here in this little neighborhood, that's still kind of close if we're just trying to approximate. Okay, so for example, t of 5.1 is about, we got to use the squiggly things, about f of 5.1. They're about the same. They're exactly the same at 5. They're close to the same at 5.1. We good with that? Okay. So we have this data here, and it says the functions f and g are differentiable. If they're differentiable, what else do we know? Continuous. With selected values up here, we're going to let h of x be equal to f of g of x. We're going to write an equation of the line tangent to h of x at x equals 4. So that means I need a point. And I need a slope. Okay, so for my point, that's going to be 4, comma, 
h of 4. And my slope is going to be h prime of 4. Okay, so I'm going to scroll so that I can write, but you'll have to look at your own table. All right, so for me to be able to find this, I need to find h of 4, first of all, right? So h of 4 equal to f of g of 4, right? I just substituted it right in. So what is g of 4? 5. So this equals then f of 5, right? And what is f of 5? Negative 9. So this is negative 9. So that means my ordered pair is 4 negative 9. Okay. Any questions about that? All right, so then we also need h prime. So we're going to have to find the derivative. So find h prime of x. I'll give you a minute to make that happen. What is h prime of x? What rule do I have to use here? Product rule, chain rule, no rules. Chain rule, right? So this is going to be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Would you agree with that? Is that the derivative? Okay. So then I want h prime of 4 going to be f prime of g of 4 times g prime of 4. So you thought h prime of 4 is. G of 4 and 5 times G prime of negative 2. F prime of 5 is 3 times negative 2. I got negative 6. Do I get negative 6? One thing you want to be careful in doing, I think you know that it does not to do it, but still, I think sometimes even when we know it, when things look weird, like when I get here, Am I allowed to multiply negative 2 times 5? No, because this is all working and it's something different, right? So don't go making up math there. Okay, so then that means that h prime of 4 is equal to negative 6. So now we can write the equation of our line. That would be y equals negative 6 times x minus 4 minus 9. Everybody okay with that? All right, so now it says use the tangent line to approximate h at 4.1. So remember, we have h, some sort of curve. We don't know, we don't know what's going on with this curve. Whatever. And then we have this tangent line. Well, whatever. Oh, my gosh. We have this tangent line here, right? And right here, they're exactly the same. Really close to it, they're about the same. So I'm going to use my line to approximate that. Now, when you see that word approximate, we're going to say h of 4.1 is about. you got to have the squiggly equal signs because we're approximating it. And notice we didn't jump to 5. We're at 4.1, so we're still in the neighborhood of that x equals 4. So then this is going to be negative 6 times 4.1 minus 4 minus 9. Do I have to go any farther? 
therefore I am not. Okay? Stop. Just stop. So you don't start making up stuff with decimals or doing anything else weird. Now, if I actually needed that number for something, obviously I would continue to go on, or if it was multiple choice, but it, should we have the skills for that? Yes, but don't. It's not worth the risk. Okay? Everybody okay with all that? Just don't forget the squigglies. They're important. Also, in addition to that, if we were to go on, so I'm going to just do one more step just to show you something, but I would still say stop here. But if the, if you do need to go on at some point, um, I'm just going to do 4. Point, what's 4.1 minus 4? 0.1. So it's negative 6 times 0.1 minus 9. Notice how I had a squiggly here, but not here. Because I'm saying that this is approximating this, but these two things actually are equal. You with me on that? So you just put the squiggly on the first one, and then the rest are just normal equal signs. Okay, we good? Beautiful. All right. So let this, okay, I want you to read this. I want you to, let's just come up with your, um, your equation of your tangent line and stop, and let's make sure we all agree on that, and then we will move on and approximate it. Ooh. Yeah, the plastic thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need a lanyard too? Okay, you just need a card. Check with your neighbor. Do you all agree with your equation of your line here? All right, so now go ahead and use it to approximate f of sure you have a squiggly. Okay. What questions you got? We good? All right. Let's just do example five together then, unless you got any questions. Anybody got anything? Okay. Could I go on? Yes. Should I go on? No. All right. 
definitely, we don't want to lose those skills. Either. All right, Thanksgiving Day, a delicious pumpkin pie was removed from an oven, has a temperature of 175 degrees. The temperature of the pie at T minutes can be modeled by the function BPDT. Use the tangent line to P at T equals zero to approximate the temperature of the pie four minutes after being removed from the oven. Okay. All right. So at T equals zero to approximate the temperature. All right. So when T equals zero, what is the temperature? 175, good. All right, so then when we look at our point and our slope, what is your ordered pair? Zero, 175, right? Our slope is gonna be dp dt evaluated at zero, 175. What do I substitute in? So here, when I here's my function or my what I'm my derivative basically, negative one over fifty times. What do I substitute in for p? One seventy five, because it says uh, da, 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 the temperature of the pi at t minutes can be modeled by the function p, where blah blah blah. So p is the temperature, t is the time, right? Very common mistake on this question is to substitute in zero for P, and that's not what's happening. So this is 175 minus 25. Now, I, technically, I can leave this like this, too. Do I really want to do that? Probably not, because that just makes everything kind of weird. What's 175 times 25? I'm sorry, not time. No. Minus 150. Okay, 1 over 50 times 150, and what does that give me? Negative three, I think. Does it make sense if the slope is negative? Yeah, because your pi is cooling off, right? So my equation then, y equals negative three times x minus zero plus 175. Again, if you don't want to put the minus zero in there, that's fine. I just think if it, since we can and it's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Are we done? No, we want to approximate that, right? So approximate to the temperature of the pi. So basically we're going to say P of four. And then what do I need? Squiggly is about negative three times what? Four plus one. questions do you have? Easy enough? You can do this, right? Okay, good deal.